this meeting to order. And uh, could you do roll call? Yes. Uh, Director Smallman is not here. Trustee Smallman is not here. Trustee Ferris is not here. Director Swan? Here. President Henry? Here. And Director Fulce is also not here. Okay. So are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? There's uh, no additions or deletions, but I would like to, to move an item. I would like to move new business, Holy Creek Business Association, and request to place a bench on district property to the beginning of the meeting. I do believe we have, but that's probably them outside. They weren't sure if it was okay to come in yet. They weren't sure if we had come in yet? The the individuals from the business association would like to address the board. Okay. All right. Okay. I told him if the board was okay. on it's okay to come. <laughs> okay. We moved you up on the agenda. Here. Okay. okay. We're, we will have public comment at this time. How many people out there want to speak in public comment? Okay. So I. I hmm. Uh, President, the people who just came in may not realize what the agenda topic is. Well, well, we're doing public comment right oh, now. Okay. 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 Just plain old public comment about anything that's not on the agenda. So, can I ask for those hands again? Uh, okay. That? Not on the agenda. Director Fultz needs help. He's help getting in. Uh, he's trying to dial in. Uh, what is the U.S. number? The U.S. Okay. He's not using the German number? Zero. Okay. Okay, we have a little bit of a delay. Sorry. So what are we doing now? We're, we're getting Bob the U.S. number to dial in. And I just sent it to him, so we'll give him a minute, he's probably dialing in. Okay. Excusing him. For being absent. For did we heard from him? Oh, you did. No. Do we don't excuse if we don't know why he's gone? Do we? Okay. I wasn't okay. sure if somebody had heard from him. Yeah. No. Was he your last name? Was he? No. no, he wasn't. Well, tell Bob for me. That if he wants to trudge off to Germany, he better not do it on a board meeting night. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to move forward with public comment. 
So raise your hand and I will call on you. The other thing is I'm going to ask that you don't talk among yourselves. It, it makes it so people can't hear in the audience. It makes it so the secretary can't hear. Anybody who's on the phone cannot hear. So address the board. Uh, mostly just you look at me and address me and don't chatter among yourselves, please. Okay? All right. Larry? Thank you. Larry Ford Felton. Um, I had a really useful and interesting personal meeting with, with Lou Ferris this afternoon and learned quite a few things and I want to make a couple of points about um, what I learned. One is that it seems to me that we're missing a really important uh, planning opportunity to uh, to be prepared for both fire management and also earthquake um, damage recovery, resilience to earthquakes. I, what I think is going to happen is a whole lot of really big expenses are going to come up pretty soon, and the the board's or the district's ability to respond to those two kinds of emergencies is going to be really compromised by cutting the environmental programs if, if you do that tonight. I think that instead of focusing on cutting budgets, which is a very crude, awkward, old method to resolve these kinds of problems, you should be focusing on new creative ways to generate new revenues. Maybe you don't have to raise the rates, but you have to come up with some other ways to raise revenues. There, there are going to be these expenses somebody's going to have to pay for. It. Um, also, um, if one of the major reasons for cutting programs and cutting the budget is because of our concern, our charity. For a menu concern, of available commands, press star for, one. There um, is one other caller on the call. Disadvantaged people in the, in the community then what we need to do is have a way to provide there, the subsidies as needed. And I think the... Um, Are you there, Bob? The Scotts Valley Water yeah. District has come up with a pretty creative way. It's on their agenda for their board meeting tonight. It's apart from uh, using rate-generated funds, <laughs> and I think we need to be more creative. This is my main theme every time I speak, is that instead of these crude cuts, which appear to have political uh, purposes, we should instead be being creative and looking for innovative ways to solve these problems so that we can provide the services that the community wants, which includes the environmental programs. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Yes, Jim. Jim. Jim Mosier from Belton. Um, I hope all of you were able to go to the Redwood Mountain Fair. It was a really fantastic event. And uh, there was one sad moment, which was when I went over to get my water, it was the Santa Cruz Municipal Water District that was, uh, had provided that water instead of us. And I thought it was really sad that we gave that district the opportunity for the free publicity uh, and the good credibility uh, instead of us. I, I'd still be bewildered by this board's decision not to provide, which didn't, didn't come out of the budget, that water to our community. And I hope that when uh, the business association from Boulder Creek comes, that you will realize how important these kinds of community events and community involvements are. Thank you. Thanks. Um, next, uh, Jenny. Uh, I just, Jenny Gomez, uh, Lompico. Um, I just came from a meeting uh, about PG&E and all of the shenanigans that have been going on related to them, and I was just thinking about how really amazing and nice it is to have local uh, public utilities as opposed to PG&E. Um, PG&E <laughs> has no environmental stewardship, no conservation. You know, they're only concerned about their bottom line and their you know massive profits and bonuses, um, and you know. They are six times convicted felons um, who are killing their customers and they're gouging us to do it. Um, 
You know, my PG&E bills are just no, nothing compared to my water bills. And, you know, just how much I appreciate having a local water utility that appreciates conservation and environmental stewardship. And they have local employees um, who understand our community and who care about our community. Um, they're good neighbors. They're our neighbors. And, and having a, a water, a local water utility to, you know, support our local events and, and things like that. Um, you know, this is something that, that we should not take for granted. And this is, this is the model that should be aspired to and, and not teaching me. Um, and and PG&E, you know, uh, another unfortunate thing about PG&E is there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. We are just less than David versus Goliath. You know, we're the gum on the bottom of David's shoe versus Goliath with PG&E. But, you know, our local public utilities, there's also accountability. And there's also so much opportunity to work with our local utilities and the people who run them. And I just want to say that I really hope that we don't lose sight of that and don't pick the, the wrong model to aspire to. Thank you. Chris? Um, Chris Finney, Boulder Creek. Um, Jenny just mentioned environmental stewardship. And I was uh, going through the budget um, earlier this week, I guess. And um, it occurred to me that there's a good deal more to environmental stewardship than um, banning glyphosate. That um, our watershed is a resource that provides us with the clean water that we all value. Um, and that once lost, it is not easily recoverable, nor inexpensively recoverable. It will cost a good deal more if we allow it to be damaged. Um, and the same thing goes for our aquifer. So I hope that the board will not be uh, pennywise and pound foolish and forget the importance of the environment to the product that you deliver to the community. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Um, Elaine Fresco Felton. I agree with everyone who has spoken here um, especially Larry Ford in terms of um, <clears throat> trying to come up with more money. And I know, Director Swan, you mentioned that. I'm wondering if you have got any ideas about how we can um, have more income instead of cutting important programs. Um, I have mentioned to a, a, a couple of people the idea, and it's been, I've been told it's impossible, that we would charge more money for water for those people who use a lot more water. And I know that, they, that, that there's a California law that says you need to charge um, just for what, uh, how much that water costs. However, LA has a program and uh, Marin County has a program where they do that and they have figured out how they can justify those increased charges. And I think before we just say, no, it's impossible, we need to look into that idea more because that would also be a way of discouraging people from using too much water. And there are many people in this, in our San Lorenzo Valley who can afford and who want to use more water and they should be paying more. Thank you. Debbie? Deborah Lowen, Lone Pico. I hadn't thought I would talk about it, but since the subject's coming up, I was showing Chuck a book I just got at the library called Hip Santa Cruz 3. It's kind of interesting. It's about the music. It's from the 60s and 70s, and the activists and musicians locally. There's a whole section here on San Lorenzo Valley. Very interesting reading, and I just started scanning it. It talks about the McPhersons and Nancy Macy and all the work they did. Um, San Lorenzo River Alliance, working with the, the county on the, the water plan for San Lorenzo. And what's really amazed in this book, they made a very high priority. They made a list of all the things that the water district and what we needed to do to protect our water and the environment. And number one was fixing all the leaks in the system, including pipes, tanks, 
fixing pumps, making sure that all the waste is gone. That was the number one environmental protection that they were working for at the time in 1972. And here we are looking at the same problems today. And so I think that fixing the system, which is what you've expressed as your top priority, is the top environmental issue we have before us. And I appreciate the board putting the energy into that. It doesn't say anything about educating the public. It doesn't say anything about that. It says protect our water resources. It starts here in the district, protecting what supply we have and being careful with it. And appreciate your work. Thank you. Anybody else out there? Yes. Hi, my name is Vi Campbell. I live in Felton. And, um, but I also work at the Soquel Creek Water District and the Water Conservation Department. And uh, San Lorenzo Valley Water District has been part of the Water Conservation Coalition of Santa Cruz County since uh, 2000, about. Um, and it was started as a, a small group of representatives um, to share media costs for communicating to the public about similar issues that all the water agencies in Santa Cruz County deal with. So that was the, in, the instigation of the, the group. Um, so each agency uh, comes together when we have certain conservation campaigns and projects that we need to work on as a group that would be better, um, that would serve our whole community and our whole county. Because as you may know, a lot of the newspapers, televisions, and radio stations cross those district boundaries. So San Lorenzo Valley Water District has been a, a member of this group for many, many years and has paid into the different projects that we share. And it's a very minimal cost. It's based on the number of connections compared to all the other agencies. So uh, the cost for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District is 11.2% of the total cost of whatever project is being worked on. <coughs> Um, last year, the one project that we've been doing uh, as a group since 2007 is the Water Smart Gardening website um, that is a photo website showing different plants that are water wise and helps gardeners choose plants that use less water and also communicates stormwater management issues and how to deal with um, gardening water and gardening. Um, and so that, that is a shared cost that the, all of the water agencies input into. Even little central water district, which only has about three employees, they put in their percentage, which is about 2%. Um, and last year, it only cost the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for a, an online tool that we all help pay for to be um, put online is the total cost is $5,000, but San Lorenzo Valley Water District only paid about $500. And the other um, projects that the, the Water Conservation Coalition does is a, a countywide booth at the Santa Cruz County Fair to communicate water conservation to the visitors at the fair. And that's one thing that we all rally around and do as a group for the, the county fair. And um, as you try and find places to cut cut and, and cut budget, um, I urge you to consider still putting in your 11.2% into our shared projects, um, at least the ones that are continuous every year that we do. Um, and it's always negotiable, and we do make uh, you know, changes and other water districts take on the costs that um, if your agency cuts that budget completely, the other water agencies are going to continue to have to pay for this website, um, but we'll still pay for it and it's still out there for the whole county to use. Um, but we urge you to still consider your contribution to that. Um, as a group, we have several projects that we're working on and they've been presented in the budget, but I just wanted to point out that of the larger budget, which is about $17,000, um, $17,485, San Lorenzo Valley Water District um, is only asked to be put in, to put in about $1,950. Um, so it's a very small cost for a large um, spread of information about conservation in the garden, 
conservation in our houses and communicating the California statewide message of conservation as a way of life even when we don't have a drought. So thank you and hope you can consider at least putting staff time and if not just the minimal cost for our shared um, costs throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Um, so we uh, moved to the first item on the agenda, the Boulder Creek Business Association request to place a bench on district property. Um, and turn that over to our general manager, Rick Rogers. Rick lost my place, so I'm going to get back. <laughs> uh, Just for the recording, to clarify, that's item 5A that was moved that, from new business to before. Right. Business. So it's now 4A. Should we double check Bob is on the phone? Hmm? Yes, Hi. Bob, excuse me, is now on the phone. Hello, Bob. Bob? He probably has to take himself off from you. He was there. Hello? Yeah. There oh, okay. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. there's a delay. Yeah, probably. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, on June 4, 2019, the district received a letter from Cameron O'Kelly with the Boulder Creek Business Association requesting that they be allowed to place a uh, bench on district property in front of the operations building, which is this building right here. But the, the sidewalks uh, belong to Caltrans, and you would put something on the sidewalks, you would need special Caltrans permits, some, sometimes difficult to get. The district property goes up to the sidewalk, but there's some indentations that could house a bench if it were so uh, desired, and that would be on actually on the district property. Staff was originally contacted uh, a couple months ago regarding the bench and because of problems associated um, with the homeless individual staff that declined the placement of the bench. Uh, the Boulder Creek Business Association letter hopes to revisit the request and request the board's approval. Uh, just some background, we are currently having issues uh, with people loitering in the area, using our porch area for restrooms, uh, leaving garbage and verbal issues with staff. We have concerns that we're already having issues with, with cleaning up after people. Um, we've had the sheriff call. Uh, there has been one arrest in the last couple of months. Um, but however, the district realizes that we are in downtown Boulder Creek in the business area and would like to be able to work with the business association if possible. Um, I put together a list uh, of request that the board wanted to um, to move ahead with their request that they would consider a formal agreement between the Boulder Creek Business Association and the district with provisions for uh, immediate removal at the request of the district and indemnification further covering the district. Uh, possible three-month pilot period with the board, uh, board of directors reevaluation uh, the, uh, the addition of a CCTV camera to our system. This building has uh, closed circuit TV cameras, pretty much 360 except the one dead zone is right where that bench would be. And we would request that business association add a camera uh, to our system. Uh, liability insurance, naming the district as an additionally insured, maintain ongoing and return of the garbage cans in front of the operation building. Uh, at one time, the business association did have garbage cans in front of uh, this building, but has reevaluated and moved things around the town um, as necessary. But we'd like to see that come back if the board uh, would allow a bench and then um, part of a, a, you know, a biannual cleaning of the, of the area if it became you know, food spills and so forth. Um, you have a memo from the business association or a letter from the business association in your packet. I turn it over to the board for questions, and I do believe there's several representatives from the Willow Creek Business Association okay. here tonight that could most likely have uh, okay. stuff to add to uh, the presentation and can answer any of your questions. Okay. All right. So, can you, do you want to speak to us? Everybody, but, um, 
Yeah. Can you identify yourself for you? I'm Tamara Kelly. I am one of the directors on the Boulder Creek Business Association. And I'm Karen Edwards, treasurer of the Business Association. And we have a storyboard here of some of the projects that we're working on right now. Um, this shows an example of the trash cans that are actually have already been ordered and they are in storage right now waiting for coordination with Caltrans, the county, Green Waste, all the parties that are involved in putting one bolt in the ground. <laughs> we have permits for these. Um, part of the site furniture set that we want to install downtown would include park benches um, and potentially flower pots and whatnot. We're trying to attract more people to downtown. Um, they've proven with more eyes on the street, there's lower crime. So we have to start somewhere. Sadly, everything that we do is fundraising. It's every dime that we have has been very hard earned. Um, so we can't afford to buy all the benches at once. We can only afford to buy one bench and use that as our fundraising mechanism to then buy the rest of the benches. So it was our hope that we could buy that one demonstration set put it in a place where it was on private property versus in Caltrans right away, so that it's more easily um, one that we could avoid all the permit costs that way. We um, would also have more control over the bench because it's on private property versus public property. If the bench is on public property, you can kind of already see where you know that could change things. So we have identified several sites downtown that there's a little bit of a setback that would be an appropriate place, some better than others. So we're kind of getting a feel for who would be open to placing said bench in that place. Um, and then the board would sit down and discuss out of those locations which one is most, most ideal to place it. Um, we already have people that want to donate and buy benches for their spouses, for their families, and people that want to team up and, and put money into this, but we have to start somewhere. So um, we have the bench, it's also in storage for the trash cans, and we're just looking for that perfect site to put it in the beginning. Um, and we have a sample of the material that the trash cans are made out of, so you can, I can pass this around so you can actually uh, feel the, the weight and the quality of, of the bench. This is, um, these are Victor Stanley benches, these are commonly used in historic downtowns. Um, they are bulletproof, they don't, heat up as much in the sun because of the powder coating process that they have. So, um, that's okay. I, I just have all the questions yeah. here. Yeah. And we also have a, um, a CAD drawing of the bench so you can see the me measurements and dimensions and whatnot. Um, the bench that we put, we actually placed the order for. Yeah, yeah it's heavy, isn't it? <laughs> it's terrible. Yes, I don't think anybody will be picking the bench up and moving it, you know, um, easily. So the bench that we've ordered is actually designed on an old casting from the turn of the century. Um, everything that we do in Boulder Creek, we try to make it as period correct as we can. Um, and the bench that we ordered is six feet long with a center armrest, which prevents people from laying down on it and sleeping on it. So, um, you know, there's two ways to look at benches. There are pros and cons. The idea that there might be alternative populations sitting on a bench um, is definitely a potential. But there's also the potential for other people to sit on the bench, people like me who can't walk that far because of a foot problem people that are elderly, people that just want to sit down and have ice cream. So we're trying to just get as many people downtown as we can. And this was kind of our, our first shot at it. Um, we've also been given the um, wonderful opportunity to be chosen as the Main Street Program for Santa Cruz County. So what that involves is Santa Cruz County has given us their economic, economic development officer to work on a program that's been in place for decades. It's not funded, it's all grassroots. Um, the county is paying for her time, and we have so far quite a few volunteers. We have a lot of people that are very excited about it. And part of the four points of the program is design. And good design brings a lot of people downtown, it helps the businesses, it just enlivens the space. So this is part of the design element of that program that we're starting to, to kick off. Um, do you want to add anything? I'm not sure if I've missed anything. <laughs> well, to, to your points, um, there were there were several points that you brought up. Uh, the cleaning of the area. We do have uh, a woman that we've hired to go through downtown once a month 
and in front of the water district is one of those locations where she will be doing cleaning of, of you know, pulling up weeds and you know, cleaning any trash that's around, things like that. So that, that is something that has already been addressed. Um, and then we ourselves do a couple of town cleanups a year, yes. and we're the ones down here pulling weeds and <laughs> cleaning up garbage and picking up things. And, and the, I don't remember the map of where the trash cans are going. The trash cans um, were all sited specifically. We had issues with trash cans that were too far on the edges of town, and one of our big problems is that people come from out of town and stuff their garbage. And, and we know it happens, and you know we can't. Not everybody has cameras, so we don't know um, who's doing it. But they fill up our trash cans, and the crows get in there. They're they're all the typical issues you have with that. So we started moving the cans around to see if we could eliminate some of the issues as far as putting cans in locations where they were needed more. So you know closer to certain stores where we know there's a lot of activity. So that way people don't just drop things on the ground right where they are. Um, with these new cans, these are going to be bolted into the ground, so we can't move them. Um, when we started this program, we had to involve Greenways, Caltrans, the county, who else am I forgetting, the contractor, me, mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. So it's like herding cats to get the location sited. They decided that the locations that we chose were good locations for the cans, um, not in front of the entrance to the building, so on and so forth. But the permit has been filed for the candy that specific place. So we can't really change the permit at this point. Um, we could probably in the future fundraise and add more cans, but this is what we were allotted. This is all we could do at this point was replace the cans that we had. And some of them actually were in such bad shape that, yeah, they're terrible. Anyways, um, <laughs> so can you think of anything else that needs to be... Uh, no, other than the fact that you know, the benches, like you said, they'll bring people, those people will then shop in town, they'll, they'll hang out, they'll enjoy, they'll leave at our restaurants, they, they'll just, you know, we've got a beautiful downtown, people should be we able do. to enjoy it. And, and I look at it this way too, it's like we do have a very small population of, of people that may be unemployed or hit a bump in the road, and you know, we, a lot of times we know who these people are, we know them by name, sometimes we even know what their issues are. Um, we've got some other people that float in and float out, but for the most part, we are a very small group of people that tend to litter downtown. And regardless of whether there's a bench here or not, they're still going to be here. They're just going to be sitting on the sidewalk and seeing the curb, sitting in the planting beds. They're going to sit regardless. So we're just proposing that we know this is a really great way to kick off the program. We want to bring more people to downtown. Um, it's not going to change the homeless element. They're still going to be here. And, uh, you know, we, we would like to celebrate the ribbon cutting for the first bench as the beginning of the design element of the Main Street program. And whoever ends up hosting the bench would be a big part of that. So it would be a, a, a time to kind of celebrate the, that's what I'm looking for, the uh, organizations working together to do something better for downtown. So. Any questions? You. Any questions? I have a question. So just to be clear, we're talking about a bench and maybe some flower pots, but not a trash can? At for the this front point, of our building? At this point, it's not within the permit that we were given okay. to put one there. Yeah, so but, right now... But like she said, we could fundraise for more trash cans. Absolutely. Yeah, but right now we're just talking about the bench. Um, and putting that on private property. The, all the trash cans that were ordered are going to be on um, Caltrans property. So, and those are going to be about 18 inches off the face of the curb at all the locations, pretty close to where they are now. Um, but the bench is a whole different thing. So that, this is our, our promotion, our, our demonstration set. The flower pots are something we're still looking into that's kind of lower on the list of things because we don't have any water downtown or very, very limited access to water. So, you know, we'd have to buy self-watering inserts and then we'd have to have somebody maintain those and it's just added expense which we're looking at later on down the road. But for right now, we want to start with the benches. It's the easier thing to start with. Are, are we in the water business? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Share a little water? Yeah. Re regarding the, uh, this, the list of 
of comments that uh, the district manager had with regards to the conditions. Mm -hmm. Are you able to meet those, or is that would not? be a board decision? It because be we didn't decision. know about any of that, so we're hearing it for the first time here tonight. So what we would do is we would take that back to the the Boulder View Business Association for discussion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you could, if you could outline that, yeah, then we'd mm -hmm. be happy to send that proposal mm -hmm. back to them and then have okay. discussion about it. Okay. How about uh, the public? Any comments from the public on the bench? Yes, Elaine? Oh, just to clarify, if, if the water district says yes, it's okay, it, you may choose another place. We may. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there right. are several locations, and the board needs to decide the pros and cons to each of those locations and what might be a better place for it. I mean, we, we need exposure. There are a couple things that we're trying to do. One is we're trying to place it in a neutral place so that the other businesses don't feel slighted because one business got a park bench and they didn't. And, you know, so we're trying to find neutral territory first where there's no favoritism shown. Um, you know, ideally in a location where you can see it, people drive by it, they notice it, like the location that they're going to use it. Um, since Shen's is right across the street. I could see people sitting there having coffee in the morning. Um, you know, it is in a nice location, it's under a tree, and there's plenty of room to put your legs out and stretch. So it's, you know, so there's a there's a few spots that are private property, but some have, you know, a better situation than others. But that's, that's for the board to decide once we uh, okay. sit down and figure out who the players are going to be, and then we go from there. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Hi. Um, when we put the park in in Felton years and years and years ago, there was a lot of comment, uh, some people were against it because, well, it would attract homeless people. And that, that was the comment. That park has proved to be an absolutely wonderful town and community center where you'll see kids playing with families, picnicking and everything all the time. The same thing with the the deck that's the center of Felton. So um, I just like to support their proposal. The more attractive you make your city, the more you increase property values, and the more people want to be in your town. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Chuck? Um, this sounds like you've thought through this process very well and thought that there's lots of upsides to this. I believe I read in the board packet that if it doesn't work out, um, it can be removed. Yes, yes. So there's, I mean, it seems to me there's really no risk in this, and ought to give it a try. Um, okay. Um, when you get to the trash can stage of this, will you be uh, putting a, a recycling can next to it? Oh yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so there is a trash. If you can turn it so she can see it, trash and recycling. Um, so one will be labeled with trash, and the other with yeah. recycle. Yeah, and they'll be side by side, just how they are now. Um, they all have rain bonnets. It'll keep the, hopefully, most of the rain out, and it'll keep people from stuffing. Um, crows, uh, that's a whole different story. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Rick, did you have any more you wanted to say, or you said? No, all? just uh, I'd like, you know, I, I've outlined several bullet points in the, in the memo, and obviously the most important would be uh, identifying the. Uh, the district and liability insurance and agreement uh, for council review, and I'm not much sure council okay. has any comments or anything she at this point, but that would be very important that we have a draft for council review. And we'll probably go from there. Okay. Um, you know, I, I do think the trash cans are important. We we did have trash cans out there before, and now they just throw their garbage in the in the planters, but. You know, and I do realize we are in downtown Boulder Creek, and I also know that the parks that BCBA have done, they take very good care of them. Um, they're very clean, and you do a great job of managing their facilities, that's for sure. We see that. We try. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for this okay. opportunity. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, so... I'll move on here um, to the public member committee appointments. Uh, Rick, you want to? Yeah, <laughs> make you go back. <laughs> Sorry.
Yes, as you know, the district uh, board director's manual policy provides for five standing committees and the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency uh, as follows. We have administration, we have budget and finance, we have an engineering, we have environmental, we have the Lompico oversight, uh, and Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency. Uh, at May 2nd, 2019, board director meeting, the board directed to, uh, two staff to advertise for applicants, applicants for the Budget and Finance Committee and the Lee Lompico Assessment District Oversight Committee. Uh, the advertisements ran in the press banner on May 10th, 24th, and June 7th uh, at a cost of $795. A sign was also posted at the entrance to Lompico uh, soliciting uh, LADOC applications. We received one application uh, for the Budget and Finance Committee. It's attached in, in your packet. Um, and with that, the staff will answer any questions. Or, uh, I'm not sure the applicant is, is here. Is oh, here? there he is. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> uh, so obviously the applicant is here. Um, Would you uh, like to stand up and, and introduce yeah. yourself? Uh, turn sure. it back over to the board. Yeah. Um, uh, I apologize, I hadn't prepared anything. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> for this. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Steve Archisel. Uh, I'm actually new to the San Lorenzo Valley. I moved here about a year ago. Uh, and uh, I'm an auditor uh, currently for my profession at UC Santa Cruz. And I have a pretty long history in my uh, career of working uh, for uh, federal government and now uh, the, um, uh, other uh, the, the universities of public uh, auditing, essentially. So uh, about 13 years now in auditing, uh, and I have a pretty strong financial background. And I was just looking at this as something to do to serve my community. Uh, once again, I'm new to the area, so I'm, I'm kind of coming at this from uh, fairly fresh eyes. Okay. Well, all I have. Uh, does any of the board members have a question they want to ask him? No, his. That's okay. No, well, we we were able to read a lot about you. Very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would so, like to move that we add Steve Archisel to uh, to the budget and finance committee. Is there any public comment? Okay. Oh, okay, Jim. Just quickly, I, I am Jim Mosier from Felton. I did see your application in the board packet, and I was very pleased to see that you applied, and I would think that it would be a really positive thing for the district uh, to have you uh, on the committee and uh, have somebody move from the Valley to get involved. And I was very excited to see your application. Okay. Okay. Um, Chuck? Likewise, an impressive resume. I'm interested in serving the community. Um, I think he'd be wonderful. Um, Right. We're on the budget and finance committee. I would be very happy to see okay. somebody with his caliber uh, All right. wanting to participate in it. Okay. So, um, Do we want to ask Bob if uh, he has any comments? Have, Bob, are you there? I am, and I think I'd echo what uh, Jim and Chuck said. It was a very impressive um, resume. Really looking forward to uh, having uh, your expertise on the budget and finance committee. This is a really very positive thing. And since I'm on that committee too, I would, I, as I said, I'm very impressed. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Director Smallman? Oh, I'm sorry. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Welcome. We'll be in touch. Okay. Thank Where you. you so, uh, oh wow, here we go. The budget. So, uh, Rick, you want to talk well, about that? Just, we'll, we'll still, we're not going to, just on one last thing on the uh, committees, we will not advertise, but I think we will, we will continue to post in, in La Pico. Okay. See if we can drum up some support. Okay. Um, maybe even send a, a letter just to La Pico folks. 
Um, we only have three. It takes three to be a quorum. I know. Um, just a thought. I don't want to advertise again because of the expense. Yeah, um, but it costs about what five thousand dollars to send letters to everybody in Long Pico. No, not to Long, just to Long Pico. Um, Probably like four hundred bucks, something like that. That's all. I think it'd be worth it. To, okay. Uh, to okay, what? We did before, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to point out that we also have a an, um, an uh, engineering department. Engineering. We can keep that on the website. I, I, I'm just concerned about the Ladock just because we're only, you know, one of them are absent and we don't have a call. Yeah. It would be good to drum up and, and get another one or two people on the committee. Right. Okay. Debbie? So the board has no problem with sending a letter? <coughs> right. Okay. If it only costs four or $500, I won't, but otherwise I do. <laughs> Debbie, you wanted to say something? My only comment is I would prefer that the district try to do a next door and Facebook promotion mm -hmm. before doing a letter because I don't believe the letter was very effective last time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that we on the committee can do more outreach and I think we need to talk about that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So. Be done with that item, then. Yes. Okay. So I'm I'm giving it back to you, Rick. The budget. I'm going to give it real quick to uh, Stephanie. Uh, you have in front of you. Uh, Stop smiling. The, uh, <laughs> the fiscal year 19 uh, and uh, 20, 2019-2020 budget. Uh, the finance manager is here. She'll present this to you. Um, so this is kind of the different things we've been looking at over the last couple of meetings all put together in our formal budget packet. Um, the memo kind of goes over some of the highlights. Uh, the district's overall budget request is $19.8 million, uh, with 8.8 .8 of that being in capital projects, um, which is a significant increase over prior years. Um, prior years have had high numbers budgeted, but then lower actuals realistically coming in. Um, I really think that this one is, you know, is budgeted with a significant number, and I think a significant amount of work is going to be actually um, getting done. Uh, one of the more new highlights is that we are trying to lock in uh, that loan that's going to help pay for a lot of the capital projects, which is part of the reason um, we're able to have some of our cash reserves actually go up, which will give the district a little bit more flexibility. Uh, being able to get this you know, near historic low rates locked in is going to be um, very advantageous so that we can pivot um, when we need to. Uh, operating expenses remain relatively flat to the prior year budget. Operating revenues um, are considered similar with water usage but haven't increased due to you know, the slated rate increase. Uh, the back side has kind of the high level categories of the sources of the funds, so it talks about where the money's coming from and then the uses of the funds for where the money's going. We took everything from the last board meeting that we had and incorporated all of those different changes into here. Um, and so that's kind of where you'll be able to see some of the, you know, some of those different changes incorporated here. Uh, the district manager has this transmit, transmittal letter as well um, that we'll go ahead and insert into the, the formal budget packet. So I'm here to ask if there's any specific questions that people still wanted some clarity on. We can go over some of those. So I'll, I'll go to the board first. I'll, then I'll go to the, to, uh, the rate payers, and then I'll come back to the board. Okay. So have you got any... Questions there, Lou? I do actually a question for Jen under the environmental section. As far as I can tell, there's only two areas that you've identified that you won't be able to do because of potential funding shortfalls. And those are um, maybe you can find it faster. 
Actually, it was in, I take it back, it was in your department report for last month. You reported on what you could and could not do. Mm -hmm. So, like that. There was two. Do you remember what they were? Or am I going to have to? There's a number of things. It's much more than two. Well, in your report, there was only two that I could see. Um, public outreach and climate ad adaptation. Everything else was, there was were, were reported on and progress was being made. So that's why my question is, am I assuming that progress will continue to be made on those other areas, but no progress will be made on those two? Well, in the near future, there won't be any uh, progress, much progress in water conservation or environmental education or land management efforts. I'm sorry, again? Um, water. Land management efforts, water conservation, and... Um, Public education. Thank you. Uh, environmental education. Off the top of my head. I don't have a list prepared. Okay. Is, is that it? Yeah. That was okay, it. Steve, if you got anything. I love it. You like the I'm budget. fine with it. I have no issues or questions. Okay. All right. So, uh, water conservation, I understand, will still happen because it'll, it'll just be in a different department. It'll be severely reduced. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Bob. Oh, Bob? I forgot about you, Bob. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. I was like, I mind. There you go. Um, yeah, I, you know, I wanted to thank Stephanie uh, for really a great job uh, on this. You know, sometimes budgets are like making sausage, and you know, it's a very uh, laborious process. But I think through a vigorous exchange of ideas and understanding of priorities, um, I think we've got to a really good place. And you know, I echo what Steve says. I think this is this is very good. Um, I think the only question I have is. When can we start spending eight million dollars in capital improvements? Something that we really needed to do in our district for a long time, and I'm looking forward to getting those kicked off as soon as possible. Do you have any idea when that loan we might know about that loan? Well, they're in the middle of it. It will probably be a 30 to 45 day process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions, Bob? No, that's it. I think we've covered, you know, like I say, we through that process over the last couple, three months, we've covered a lot of ground, and I think we came to a really great place. Thank you. Okay, um, I'll go to the to you rate payers out there. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, Would you point yeah, go on. Uh, Larry Ford, Felton. I. I'm having a hard time finding anywhere in the budget where the um, water system upgrade is going to be paid for to make the, the, the district more resilient in a major wildfire. So I'm talking about increasing the um, pipeline dimensions from two inches in some places to six inches or, or larger, more fire hydrants. I don't see that in the budget. And we're starting this year, this, I mean, we, we've now entered, you know, one of the most risky fire seasons that we've ever had here. And so I want to know how we're going to, how we're going to prepare for that. Similarly, we're at a point where um, we can expect to have a major uh, earthquake, maybe more than one, occur. So what are we doing and, and where, where in the budget is it going to come to prepare for things like, you know, an entire side of the valley having all the water lines broken? Where are we, where, where is that going to come from to put in, um, you know, resistant pipelines? If you don't mind, I'm going to turn this over to our general manager and let him respond to you, I, okay? Could I ask one more thing? Sure. One of the biggest problems that I've seen around the San Francisco Bay Area is when either of these two types of major catastrophes occur is that 
So there are so many people in the neighborhoods now. This isn't a water district problem, but this would be a regional problem. There are so many people with cars that are parked overnight that the fire trucks and the emergency service vehicles cannot get to where they need to go. So we don't have the water pressure and we don't have access. And this is a catastrophe waiting to happen in spite of the best intentions of the fire department. Thank you. Rick, could you? Well, the budget does provide for several capital improvement pro projects when we have which our main replacement, you know, a large transition main coming out from our large storage tank in Boulder Creek to connect to the backblower system where you can move water from one end of the valley to the other to the emergency inner ties. That's, that's it's a major project, um, which its, its size is to increase for, for fire flow and to move large volumes of water from one end of the valley to the other. It's been one of our um, weak links that's been identified a long time ago. And there's several other projects. There's uh, the probation tank. It's increasing it from 100,000 to a half million gallon. It is in construction as we speak. Mm -hmm. I think they're laying uh, the steel panels out um, as we speak. Um, there's uh, the swim tank that we're moving on and trying to replace and moving it from 20,000 gallons to 120,000 gallons. So there are, there are projects throughout uh, the budget, and then there's we are moving at the same time we just receive our request for proposals for our water master plan. And what our water master plan is going to do is going to look at our entire system and model it and to look and see where we're deficient. I know it's easy to say with our two inch and that's pretty, pretty obvious where our deficiencies are. But this is going to be a computer model that's going to tell us where we're deficient in fire flow and in our systems and, and where we need to upgrade. Um, we're working on that. We are working right now. Don't think this budget doesn't have, this budget has eight additional generators. A big part of this fire safety plan is the PG&E outage. Yeah, you know, you're talking about a valley-wide power outage yeah. in San Lorenzo Valley. Yeah. So we've got eight additional generators, four stationary, four mobile in this budget. It's going to take a while to get them and then get, and get them out into the system. But that's a lot of generators to increase in one fiscal year. Um, and we're getting close to where we'll have enough generators for every site. Um, we're working, uh, there's a mailing going out, hopefully in the next week to two weeks, to talk to people about preparation for the PG&E power safety shutdown, not to use water to conserve. Our operations staff are right now, they are working in, in each individual zone identifying the, the rate of rise in each tank so we know how long a generator needs to be. We'll work with our SCADA system. So there's a lot being done in preparation, which the same preparation that we do for fire can be is done for earthquake, and it's a lot of water quality, and we have emergency response plans. I, I was here you know, for the 89 earthquake, and uh, I was director of operations at the time, and, and ran the water system. And you know, we know where a lot of our deficiencies are. And we have came a long way since the 89 earthquake. I know that's what, quite a few years ago. But there's been a lot of improvements from that, from that situation. And there's always, you know, this district is way behind. There's no doubt about it. We have infrastructure that is substandard, that leaks, that undersized, that doesn't have fire flow. But the, the rate structure in this budget is actually one of our most aggressive for replacement of infrastructure. Um, uh, the engineering department will probably in the next month be out for a request for proposal for the plans and specifications for the, the loan. And that loan is what, $10 million? We're looking at 10 to 12 million and in, in infrastructure, and that's pipes and tanks. You know, that is fire supply for not only earthquake, but for for fire. So we're we're actually moving in the most aggressive direction since I've been at the district, and that's been a while. The most aggressive since when? Since I've been at the district, since so you, four, oh. Oh, 40, 40 plus years. Wow. And we are actually really moving ahead, and we fired the board is. Uh, uh, funded the position of a district engineer. So now we're on top of these projects in-house. Made a major difference in, in speeding up the process. Uh, the board is talking about approving a pipeline crew, which is crews for to install pipeline that are off the main highways that we can do them um, 
less expensive and don't have all the regulatory with Caltrans uh, and the kind of private roads that we can do. We don't have the traffic. So we can lay pipe there and all of that will be uh, with fire flow in mind and comes with hydrants. I mean, just because you don't see fire hydrants in the budget, that automatically comes with mainline. Hmm. That's just part of, of the, the, uh, the, the appendix to, to How many years will it take to, to get us up to speed for dealing with a major wildfire like that swept through well, we never Santa Rosa? Will. We never will, but we'll be making headway. Yeah. You know, it's going to be, it's an ongoing, it's like they say, the Golden Gate Bridge. It, you, it, you know, we've got a large amount, and one of the, what the master plan will tell us, it'll tell us, it'll give us a price tag, and that price tag is going to scare the heck out of all of us. When we get done with the, my, the master plan and see with the replacement of all of our small, undersized water storage tanks, our undersized make that, it, that price is going to scare the heck out of us. And we just start working at it. I mean, the main thing is we keep moving. We keep moving ahead uh, and get a substantial amount done every year. Yeah. But you know, we're never going to get you know, we'll be realistic. That kind of money is um, not unless we have some you know, huge grant or something, that kind of money to get in here. The ratepayers aren't going to be able to afford uh, that an aggressive capital improvement program. Yeah. Um, and who knows? Maybe once we start getting pipe in the ground, maybe the ratepayers will come forward and say, we like what we're seeing. You guys are spending our money wisely. We want to accelerate. I, I think the ratepayers are already saying that. Well, some aren't, some aren't. Yeah, some aren't. But some are. Some have a bad taste in their mouth from the past when we didn't <laughs> accelerate, when a drought came, yeah. or uh, okay. uh, one thing or another came, took our funds. We didn't have the money to do it. We have a rate. We have a rate structure now, and it's aggressive, and we're moving ahead. I, I don't Okay, I'm just, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 you've been giving me the eye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I answered your question. Right. Yeah. Mostly He's just you. answering the questions. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Can I maybe make a comment? Um, as Larry indicated, we talked about this earlier. I think it's a very good question. What are we, or what is this board going to do about fire planning? Um, but I think a, maybe another good question would be. Why have the boards in the last 20 years ignored this issue repeatedly? You know, but that's an academic exercise. It, there's no sense in going there. But you know, that's a question I would love to hear an answer to because now we have to face the problem. But to answer your question, we are facing the problem. It is on the agenda for the Environmental Committee. We did start the discussion at the last meeting. Uh, I think it's safe to say from the enthusiasm of the people during that discussion, you know, that's going to rise very quickly to the top of, envir of the environmental Priorities is that? Would you agree with that, Jen? You know, so that is very at least top on my list, both from an engineering standpoint as well as an environmental standpoint. We need to address it, and but it's too bad that we have ignored it for so long, which makes it an even tougher problem to deal with now. And why we're, as Rick was trying to say, it's going to take years to fix because we've ignored it for years, quite quite honestly. Okay. Um. Elaine, yes. Um, I, I just am uh, a little confused about the rates. Will there be a rate increase this year? And uh, there was a five-year plan. Uh, rate increase every year for five years, and, and I so think that's gonna, you're going to go forward with that. That's going to be third year this in so November. The third year, and yes, that yeah. is what is built into this budget. Okay. All right. Okay. And oh, one more question. I'm sorry. The environmental uh, portion of the budget, I can't, I can't remember, it was like 5% or 4% of the whole expenses, and then it's been cut. Is that right? I looked. At, I remember seeing that chart. Um, it just it seems to me like it represents such a small amount of the whole budget um, that it... it just doesn't make sense to me that that's, that's where do we continue to get the money from? We uh, we yeah. got so much to do. I agree, but I think environment is really really important. Okay. All right. Okay, Jim, you had your hand up. Yes, I'd like to just follow up what Elaine said. And, and just in this discussion, I want to note that in the issue of environmental programming, how important water conservation is. 
PG&E, water conservation is going to be critical. For the fire, for the fire prevention generally, water uh, and the environmental program is so important in making us, uh, 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 making this district safe. Environmental programs are critical on so many different fronts, the habitat restoration, the fish monitoring, the, the, uh, the liaison uh, working, uh, working regionally. Um, and to cut the staff by half, uh, you know, I don't know what the staff positions are, but I know that the, I, went, I went to the environmental committee and I was, I really learned a lot. And one of the things I learned is, my gosh, there is so much to be done. And there's so much work being done. I'm just, I'm astounded at what the environmental department is able to do with the limited resources they have now. So I, I'm just amused by why this is the one place that you would cut, um, which I, I, I see this as absolutely critical. I think, I think it's something that, um, and you say, where is the money going to come from? The kind of money that Rick was just talking about. $240,000, it wouldn't be that much, but to save that position and to save the fish monitoring and the habitat restoration, that is really important stuff, and it's not going to bring us more than, what, 20 feet of pipe. That's not going to solve the problem. And the long-term implications of making these cuts, we don't know what they are, but I think they're going to be serious. And it really is, you know, the, when the three of you ran for election, what you said was, that the rate increase was being misspent, that there's all these cuts you're going to make, you're going to show how we're going to save all this money, but when we come to this budget, and I want to say I really support the infrastructure part of this budget, I, I commend you for going forward with this, that we have an aggressive plan, it may need to be more aggressive, uh, but I'm, we're doing it, that's great, but why are we sacrificing the environment? Uh, it's not that much money in the picture of things, and. I, I, I really I don't understand why that is considered waste. It, it's, it's absolutely critical to this valley as far as I'm concerned. And one last thing um, uh, that I wanted to say, and it had to do with what, what uh, I've lost that point now, but I'll just stay with that, that I really urge you to rethink losing a staff position. I think we need having two people in that, in that department you know, I don't, again, I don't know, I, I'm not commenting on what each staff person does, but just from the outside and hearing all of the things that is being done, it seems to me, that it really doesn't make sense to me why that department has been picked on as the place that you're going to cut. Um, and uh, and, and, and in, in the meantime, put 190, what, $1.9 million into reserve. Um, we need bigger reserves. I'm glad we're adding to reserves. But if you put in 1.6 instead of 1.9, is that going to break the bank? Uh, I, I just think, why cut back in this area where we clearly know that there's going to be more work? So that's what I have to say. Jenny? To uh, follow up and, and build on what, what Jim just said, um, you know, I've worked in environmental consulting field for many years, and, you know, you've got all of these big capital improvement projects that are coming online and you're going to need to you know have environmental compliance on those and you know the relationship that you have with you know the regulatory agencies is an extremely extremely important um, thing and you know the nature of environmental compliance you know an, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and you're going to end up, you know, sacrificing this department to build up a reserve that you're going to have to use because you're going to have a, an emergency that you're going to have to deal with because of that. Um, and, you know, how, how does that bring us out any farther ahead than where we are now? Um, you know, banning glyphosate is, is not an environmental program. Um, and you need to figure out a way to, to manage Olympia. Um, you, know, it, you know, what is the size of, of the reserve that, that you're looking to build? And when you get to that number, you know, will you commit to, you know, bringing back all of our conservation funding to, to full levels again? Um, <laughs> I think that's time closer. No, but I talked way longer. Okay. <laughs> uh, Chuck? 
Um, well, I'm glad to see that there's possible, it's possible to have a very aggressive capital program now. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm glad you're pursuing this and um, you know, going out for the funding necessary to do that. Um, but in you know, what others have said, you, know, you have a $1.9 million increase in reserves here, and you're cutting one department uh, very severely. So I, I guess I would like to ask you to come back in sometime in the near future and say, what is your long-term reserve plan? When, um, how, you know, this is 1.9 million this year, next year, what do you feel like it's necessary to get to? And over what time period will it take to get there? And at the end of that, um, does the savings in uh, monies that are now needed to go into reserves get considered for other programs that members of the public are very interested in? Or, or is the, the message, again, going to be, no, we need to do the capital on that? Because it's been spoken that, you know, we need to cut programs because we don't have adequate reserves. Well, you're getting to a reserve level that is fairly respectable in a year, and another year would get you, you know, up to something that, if it were of the same magnitude, something uh, starting to get maybe comfortable looking. So start thinking about a long-term way to transition from this very aggressive um, the capital and reserves only funding into something else that uh, other people in the valley uh, consider to be valuable. Okay. Uh, Debbie, you had your hand up. Yeah, Deborah Lillman Lopico. And I am also concerned about fire safety, and, and that's one of the reasons I, I'm really supportive of the water master plan. I know that one of the main purposes of it, besides supplying water, drinking water, is for fire flow. And I think Everybody in the district knows that's something to be addressed and it will be formally addressed and engineered and with the help of our new engineer, it will be moving forward and that's a real relief. Um, as to fire protection ourselves, I took a CERT class and, and a lot of people should probably consider that. You learn a lot about fires and one of the first things we have to do is make sure our own homes are ready for fire. Get yourself ready, get your neighbors ready, talk to your family because the one thing about fires is they are not predictable. They can move in amazing ways that you can't expect. I know the city of Paradise, I read in the newspaper, had one of the most comprehensive fire plans there was in the state. And we see what, saw what happened there. They were on top of it. And yet you cannot predict it. And so ourself, we ourselves have to be ready. Um, one of the th issues in the district is fire protection of our watersh watershed lands, and I know there's fire roads, and Jen has talked about that those are maintained annually. I, s I looked on the uh, bill pay list. We The district hires a registered professional forester to maintain those roads, both for erosion protection and for fire safety, and he does clearing. Um, just this year, he's been, I looked at the bill list, he's been paid twice. Um, for a total of oh, just over five thousand dollars for work during that, it was also in the operation department report that he's meeting with them for road maintenance in our watershed. So that reassures me that the, the district is looking at that and does have plans that have been in place. And um, if we can improve that, that's fine. But my biggest priority is improving the size of pipes and the fire hydrants and the tank capacities, and I believe that's all going to come out of the infrastructure fund, and that's where I want to see my money go to. Um, conservation, it's been addressed in uh, several of the committees that the people in this valley are really, really doing a good job of conservation. So there's a limited amount of money that can be put towards that, that we're not going to make that big a difference. We're already, already doing a really good job. And until the next drought, I think we're, we're uh, we're good on that. <clears throat> and like Jim, I'm losing my thought. <laughs> um, I think I'll leave it at that. But thank you very much for concentrating on the district and the district's needs. But yes, my thought was, we have many, many really fine groups in this valley that have to do with environmental protection, conservation. Um, we've heard some from people who represent them. They can do a good job educating our community on that. But what they can't do is replace our tanks. They are not going to step forward and pay to replace tanks. They are not going to step forward and pay to put in fire hydrants. That's the district's responsibility, and that's our primary objective here. Thank you. Chris, you had your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, I uh, have a lamentable uh, 
experience with my first ex-husband. We, <laughs> we had an old Volkswagen Beetle, which is an air-cooled engine, and the fan belt broke. And he drove it home because he didn't have three dollars and he didn't have any change because people didn't have cell phones then to call me to get me to get him three dollars. Um, it cost us a lot to replace that engine uh, because he burned it up. And I am concerned that neglecting money to pay for watershed maintenance, to pay for land management, um, to do those sorts of things is eventually going to burn out our engine. So the lack of a $3 fan belt is going to cost us our engine. Um, and, and so um, I do think that some of the things that Jen mentioned that are going to be delayed or not in the near term be able to be addressed at all or anything like that seem to me to be things that do have value um, in preserving our water quality and um, making properties less vulnerable to uh, fire, uh, removing, removing uh, broom, for example, which burns like that. Um, that these are important things and that they need to be funded or else the cost down the road could be much higher. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. I'm April Zilber, and um, I just want to make a general statement that in my, my opinion is that environmental stewardship, which you've all signed on for, is not just the absence of the application of herbicides, but it also means paying attention to the environment that you're running your water system in. And so things like fish monitoring and restoration practices and monitoring are still <coughs> important and so I wish you would reconsider cutting the budget for that staff that we need to do those activities. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Hi, I'm Barbara Springer. A budget is a, a statement of values and that's what you know we're seeing here and that's what you're putting forward and that's what you're voting on. The values in this valley have always been ones of strong environmental stewardship. And this district, there's only two public agencies that, that govern this area. It's the school district and this one. And this is the one that's primary, you know, that's part of what you're responsible for. And it's not just now, it's the statement of what we're teaching our kids and how they will be stewards in the future. We all see this as new people move into the area and they don't understand and they pave things over and they don't understand the need to have water being able to go back in, into the land. You know, all of the permeable surfaces <coughs> and things like that that we know are so important. These educational, the environmental educational pieces are so important. I looked at this budget, the statement of values, and I see that there's, you know, been this big increase, okay, that the previous, that the prior board was able to put in place, which is being used, almost 50% of the budget is being used for improved capital investment, which is wonderful. But, but that was put there. I am not seeing, as, as I think uh, Jim said, I'm not seeing the big savings. What I'm seeing is a token savings. And I'm seeing this, you know, this 1.9 million that's going into reserves. It's great that we can increase reserves. But the cost of doing that, this little tiny piece, this one, you know, around 1% of the budget is making a statement. And the statement it's making is that protecting our environment, teaching our children about our environment, and being good stewards of the environment is no longer important here. And this budget is it's particularly difficult because this budget's being passed today. On, <coughs> and I know it's going to pass. I know you guys are going to do this. But it's being passed on this Thursday when Sunday is the memorial for Fred McPherson, one of the architects of the protection of this valley. And we're doing this right at, at this time. 
So if there's any chance that you could think about the pittance that we're talking about to protect this area versus, you know, the, putting the, you know, take an extra year to get the money into the reserves and maintain the statements and maintain the values that have been so important in this valley. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Bob, are you still there? Another speaker. I am. Uh, do you want to make another comment? You have another speaker here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I guess I will. Wait a second. Okay. We got. Hang on, Bob. No, hang on, Bob. Oh, okay. Um. Uh. My name is Vi. Oh, sorry. Uh. I'm Vi Campbell. I'm with. Um. I live in Felton, and I hope and I was very very disappointed at the cancellation of um, Carly Blanchard's position as um, my my values I agree with you the budget is really a statement of your values I really value tanks and hydrants and pipes and good models and maps um, I've been working in GIS for 20 years and in conservation um, and I have been water educator for um, since 1999. And although the <coughs> teachers are tasked with teaching our children about environmental values as it has been integrated in the next generation science standards this, um, that have been put in place last year, it is still, there is not a, f a, a super strong focus on water, the value of water systems, the value of water. It's integrated, but it doesn't have a strong focus. When a representative from the water district shows up and talks about what, what is important about our water and why is it important for us to save it and conserve it through all of the changes of our, of our climate and, our, and years of drought, it is so important to teach that bigger picture of how our water system works why it's important to have um, open space to allow and forested land to allow that infiltration into the groundwater. And the, there are students that I taught when they were in second grade and they're now out of college and they told me later on there's a couple people that I've seen over the years that are now graduating <coughs> college and studying environmental studies because I, I remember your, your presentation about groundwater. I understand why it's important to to save it and to protect it. And I was so disappointed that you canceled the program with San Marzo Valley High School. And mm -hmm. my children are not going to be able to partake in some of those science programs that you, that you help fund that were great ongoing research that the students got to have hands-on learning, which is really when you learn the best is to have that hands-on learning that this water district helps sponsor those programs. And Jen and Carly have been doing an amazing job at communicating the importance of our environment and the importance of our, of our stewardship of the environment um, as a total, not just the pipes, tanks, and, and wells, but really for the, the minimal cost compared to the entire budget, I think it makes an impact that is not measurable by number of, of units sold, but by years later, the effect on how people use that water, how they, how they value their water system. If there's an increase in, in their bill, they can appreciate what goes into the back end of that and how important it is to, to pay for the water system as well. It's like the bigger picture. And so for the, the small percentage, of those programs, the, the cost that your total budget equals. Um, it just doesn't seem worth it to cancel programs that have been going on for years and years and years that support a culture of environmental stewardship in the San Lorenzo Valley. So I really encourage you to not just completely cancel these programs and eliminate positions that help support that, but to, or continue to support that task in other whatever titles they are but continue to participate in programs that help support the environmental education um, and, and water system awareness and, and teaching that value of water in, in our environment. There are not a lot of organizations that do that. 
they are, there are some, but we also all work together as a team to help communicate that and, and also communicate the federal programs as well as the statewide programs that don't have a lot of budget for marketing. It's the local agencies that help support those programs and the, and the messages and communications that those programs give us, like WaterSense, like the um, Next Generation Science Standards and the um, uh, USGS, the Groundwater Association of America. Those different organizations all have um, curriculum to teach these, these things, and so I hope that you continue to like value that in your budget and not completely cut these programs that have been developed over so many years. So, but Carly and Jen have been doing a really good job of keeping that message going and those programs running. So, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Bob, are you still there? Thank you. You want to say something? Yeah, just just a few. I think hopefully we'll help shed some light on at least my priorities or budget. I, I appreciate all the sincerely uh, made statements, um, really focused on the environmental aspect of this budget. Um, I think there's a few key items that um, to address. <coughs> From my point of view, the budget actually is a clear statement of the commitment that we have to the creation of our environment. Right now, we're currently taking out of our watershed about 25% more water than we're actually providing to customers. And for me, it is critically important that we get our infrastructure to a place where we narrow that gap substantially. That is, we have to take the water out of the environment to begin with. And that is a huge advantage for the environment overall. And the only way that we're going to do that in a quick fashion uh, and, and sustained fashion is by focusing on the infrastructure. Um, the team did a great job. Uh, presenting uh, the results of the detect uh, uh, last year. We saved just through that one aspect alone about 10% water uh, that we extract from our ecosystem. That 10% with our current metrics in cons the conservation program take us 100 years to eat that same amount of water saving that we uh, achieved just through a concentrated leak detection system. So from my point of view, the, the fastest way is to continue the leak detection or leak plugs and get that solved as quickly as possible. That will have more impact on preservation of the environment than we can do. The uh, other Uh, agency, the tune of several hundred thousand, I forget the exact number for this year, but it was around 400. That is a huge commitment on the part of our payers in our district uh, finding a way to work together to sustain the groundwater. Uh, and again, how do, we how do we reduce the amount that we're actually pulling out through SLD Um so, and then finally, I think the real key thing here is I can I understand all of this. There's also a political aspect all of this to uh, address. The recent campaign made it very clear that our focus was going to be on infrastructure and building our reserves back. And this budget is a huge step towards achieving that. The amount of reserves, our reserves are critically low at this point, dangerously low. In that, in the, if a major picture happened now, our district would be in serious trouble. Um, relative to goals, we are putting together what those reserves are going to be. My personal goal is about four and a half months of operating expenses, about five to six million in capital reserve. We have a $3 million unfunded pension liability. 
We have deferred maintenance that I believe will be in the order of millions of dollars. We have a meter replacement program that is, that is short of that will also be the dollars. We're trying to quantify those numbers. Bottom line is this district is probably over 10 million for, uh, for just to catch up to where we can actually start being um, at a point where we're not uh, having to catch up. Um, and that is because of the prior boards have taken the time off these balls and have not been willing to address them and make the hard decisions necessary. So, so this budget is that balancing between focus on how we protect our, our environment for infrastructure building our reserves up well, from their critical levels and to get a infrastructure program going forward. I fully support this budget and looking forward to voting on it. And, um, more importantly, seeing it next the course of the next 12 months. I've got here, folks. So. Well, any, have to no, no, I just said thanks. Oh, so any other comments? If any, just, no. If anybody missed it, Director Fultz is in Germany. Yeah. That's the. Yeah. The, yeah. The Deutsche Bank. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, any other public comments? No. no. I think everybody's talk. talked. Okay. They I don't get to the talk board. again. I don't mean, I You're a board member, board. yes. I'm coming back to you. Thank you. I reached out to Jen um, recently and to try to get some feel of the environmental department. Uh, and the first question I asked her was, I read a report, of, this is a few months ago now, but in her departmental report it said she gets a phone call every six minutes. And I asked her, is that true? Yeah. And she says, yes. Yeah. And that, and looking at page 40 under the environmental department, array of strategy and programs related to providing a safe, reliable, sustainable water supply, there's seven key elements. And as I look at those and try to digest them, I think we have a much bigger problem with environmental than just what we're talking about cutting out of the budget tonight. So having said that, I want to make a passionate plea to the, to the audience. And I, I'm pleased to hear a lot of people talking about environmental in such a passionate way. Because I am not an environmentalist. I, I admit that freely. I, even though I am the new department chair, you know, I, I have no formal training in environmental studies. But I'm a fast learner. And I've offered my services to Jen. Uh, you know, I, I think we can work together. I ask you to start coming to the Environmental Committee meeting and helping us. Because one of the things I think we miss right now is a list of priority items for environmental. What's the top thing? I don't know. I look at the list and I can't come up with it. But I will make a, a pledge to you. If we can come together and agree on what the, the real top issues are in environmental, and we believe they're not being funded, I will happily take that to the board and, and ask if there's any way we can get money for that. So, um, Steve? No comments. I'd like to make a motion that we approve resolution number 33, adopting the fiscal year 2019 and 2020 budget in its present form. Okay. Is there a second? I believe, is there more to the, the resolution than just what you talked about, Steve? I think there's... Uh, well, there's... So we should be resolution of tax, isn't it? There is a resolution got, here. The title that we have... I, I, I didn't hear anything. We have to check it out. So just, is, oh. I think that's important, isn't it? 1819? Yeah. Resolution number 33. Approved resolution number 33. Right. Parenthetically, 18-19. I will second that motion. Okay. Okay. okay um, Holly, would you like to call the vote? Director Ferris? Aye. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Motion passes. All right. So, um, I guess that moves us on to um, 5B, which is Bear Creek Estates. And uh, the engineering manager is here and will give the staff a vote. Yes. 
So, this, you know, as it's included in the staff support, uh, the one proposal that we received on the Bear Creek State Wastewater Treatment Facility Alternative Analysis RFP was taken to the Environmental Committee. Um, the Environmental Committee reviewed it, and we had some public comment, and the decision was made at the Environmental Committee to um, move forward. I'm sorry, engineering. I don't know if I got engineering. <laughs> engineering Committee was to uh, recommend to the board that the RFP, or the proposal we received, be rejected and that additional evaluation be done of the firms that we solicited and uh, so I have I have done that um, basically we sent the RFPs out to 15 different firms um, I've contacted all of those 15 different firms and basically only four of those 15 firms do this type of work the other 11 firms they just, they just don't have the technical expertise to deal with this. Uh, one of those four firms that we sent to is WFC, and because they wrote the RFP for the district as an unqualified consultant, they were unable to submit a proposal on it. So it left you with three firms. Uh, two of the firms are very large firms, um, BKF Engineering and Harrison Associates. Um, a lot of times, if you're going to be working with those types of firms, uh, you need to interact with them, make phone calls, you know, find out who has the RFP on their desk, um, you know, answer questions that they have, those sort of things. Another thing that we can do to encourage um, engineering firms to make uh, proposals is to have a field visit, actually invite them out to the, to the particular site, show them, you know, the location, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I, I kind of got the impression that, you know, the two large firms just sort of thought it was a, a little small project, not a lot of profit margin involved in it, and sort of just, you know, dismissed it offhand, which left the one firm that we did get the proposal from, which was uh, IBC. So if we, have, if we reject this, then are we up the creek without a paddle? Well, I think, you know, I think we can... Uh, target a, a different group of engineering firms. Uh, you know, I've got some firms here that we did contact that might be interested. Um, Corolla, Brown, Caldwell. There's Stantec. There's a few that you know. If we were to contact and let them know that we had an RFP out, they do that type of work, and we may encourage them, maybe able to encourage them to submit a proposal. Uh, so. Yeah, that, 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 we, that would be our option. So now that we have an engineer on staff, we can follow through and, and make follow-up phone calls, spoon feed them, and, and, and work with them all through the process. The one firm that did uh, submit uh, a proposal is, an, is a firm that's an existing working on Bear Creek, and one of the representatives from Bear Creek Estates that was here that really felt that you know, they've been out there working and they haven't been able to get the the plan of compliance, and they felt it would be better if a different firm um, was to to look at the uh, and do the uh, proposal. So is that a what an oxygen thing or what is it? What is the problem? Nitrous. Oh, nit oh not nit nitrogen. Nitrogen. Yeah, nitrogen. <laughs> not oxygen. Yeah. Sorry. Nitrogen reduction. So <laughs> the state board has tasked us with a fifty percent nitrogen reduction. Okay. In the discharge. And so we think when we reject this one, this uh, the RP that we have, we go out to bid, and, and Darren will work with individual consultants and try to spoon feed them and get them to, to walk through a, a bid. So do we need to vote on this to reject it, or? What one comment I want to make to the board? Uh, you know, there's been some numbers thrown around that you know we went out to 15. Let's go out to 30. I don't think we're going to go out to 30, but we're going to go out to maybe five or six. But they'll be specifically targeted for that type of work. And, and okay. We're hoping that of the five or six that we target, we'll get proposals from three or four of them. Okay. And yeah, the uh, recommendation, well, alternative, one of the options of uh, uh, included in the memo is to reject the RFP and direct staff to. Solicit and then close. Okay. And we've got to be done by motion of the board. By motion of the board, yes. Okay. Want to make a motion? I, I have a comment. A comment. Or actually, a point to add to what Darren was 
for a couple of points. Number one is I don't think we actually had a number of, of consulting firms that we wanted to get quotes from. We, we, we were going to just put out a broader net right. Right. and see what comes in because we, we were uh, limiting ourselves to local uh, contractors and we only got one proposal. So it, it, are you looking that way, casting a broader net, and that's where you're getting the six from? Cast, casting a broader net, but specifically targeting those engineering firms that do this type of work. That will give us a proposal. It should lead to a proposal. And the other thing was, there. one of the reasons why we were recommending rejection of that proposal is there was a critical specification error that the company, that IC did not note that the public had to bring to our attention. <laughs> Which was embarrassing for me. I don't know about everybody else. Um, has that been correct? Do we know was that their error or was that part of an error in our RFQ that we need to fix? No, no, it wasn't an error in the RFQ. I think it was just a, a typographical error or, or mathematical error that that particular. Firm. But it was a significant error. It was, it was lowering the, the goal by fifty percent, which we don't want to do because right. it's a, it's a mandated requirement for us, right? That's yeah, the mandate's fifty percent reduction. Yeah. So if we send out a proposal for 25 percent we can we can succeed and fail at the same time right i mean we, we need we have to do 50 percent so nitrogen good. right reduction that's right. Right. right i i got it right that time right. nitrogen okay so well, that was there that, that specification was there error yeah well to answer well, to make specifically clear. to answer your question i think it was uh an error I, when i read the report they were basically saying that they reduced it by ten. That, if, that that you know their effective reduction in nitrogen had been fifteen percent, and it, it it actually was like twenty five percent or something. But it it was so far, it was far from the fifty percent that we needed. That we needed. I think they were talking more about what it actually that what they'd actually been able to achieve the plant, not necessarily attempt to change the percent reduction that was required by the state. But it, 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 it was a technical error, but it, it, it was, I didn't feel it was that substantial, but it was a technical error that, that, that the, uh, uh, had to be pointed out by members of that uh, subdivision. So was, this was a request for qualifications rather than the a proposal or no? The original uh, what was originally circulated was a request for proposal. Okay. For an alternatives analysis for the wastewater uh, okay. facility. Okay. Okay. So and we and we got one, and we're proposing that we reject that one okay. and go back out to targeted proposals to people that can a accomplish the job because mm -hmm. that's the other thing. This company that this one proposal was from somebody who's tried to fix it in the past and failed. So we, we have a real question about the, the risk factor of going with this. With this okay. uh, yeah, the company's well, been involved with the project for about three years, I believe. Isn't that right? correct? Yeah. Now there's some, we limited them a little bit, right, Rick? I mean, maybe it's fair to say it wasn't all their fault. No, failing, but at the same time. That's correct. But, you know, Stacy did rep does represent the majority of the people out of Bear Creek. And, and it, you know, he had a good point. And, that's worth we're trying to respond to it. It's worth responding to, and seemingly at one better. Um, yeah, I think uh, the, the, the thing to do is to uh, have the board reject that motion and direct staff to go back out. And did the other two uh, people that bid, you said the larger firms, did they, they never did submit a bid then, yeah. I take it? No, they uh, no, the two large ones never submitted a proposal. So there's, only, no, one proposal. there's only the one bid from the people that did it, the work before. That had, that had been involved the last right. three years. Okay. Right. And the wider net you're looking at, or the targeted five to six places, I mean, do, are they identified? Are they, it doesn't really matter geographically, I guess they could be anywhere in the Central Valley and still be a candidate, but do you have those already identified? Yeah, so uh, the two that I've already contacted would be uh, BKF, and they're in San Jose, Harrison Associates, they're in Salinas. I, I'm, I'm looking at um, Parolo. Brown and Caldwell, Stantec. There's another firm that EKI. I don't know where these district offices are, but they're they're probably in the South Bay. Okay. Did you did you discover them by recommendation from somebody? Talking to other engineering firms. Oh, okay. You know, okay. asking them. Mm -hmm. you know. 
Right. That sounds do, like do you right have this particular expertise? No. And then you know engineering firms that do have that particular expertise. If you had something like this, what firm would you be consulting sure. with that sort of thing? Yeah, no, that's the way to do it. Okay. It's, it's worth noting, though, that, that there is some risk associated with this because we are in a cease and desist order from the state. Right. And well, we've been under for we have a compliance years. order. But what we'll do is we will do an update our next quarterly report to the state and tell them where we are in the process. And we have reason to believe that they're going to accept it just like we Usually if we're working on compliance and moving forward, they work with you. It's when you don't do anything that they may. But my point is that you know there yeah, is some yeah, risk because we're delaying it yet again by going out for proposals uh, a second time. They don't want it, fix, they don't want it um, repaired correctly. Right. Yeah. Because they're tired of you know not being able to get it repaired and get it in compliance, so they'll work with us. I'm pretty sure they will. Do you have any idea um, the timing on these proposals? I could start working on it as soon as. No, I mean as far as responses back. We usually put it out there for 30 days, and, so, and we get. You think we'll get at least most of those six? Well, I'm certainly yeah. going to try to get you know as many as possible. He's going to twist the arms. Risk is minimal. <laughs> Just about there. One point of clarification. If we do go, if we do reject this bid and we go out and we get no proposals, do we still retain the ability to negotiate with to select a firm and negotiate with that firm, or by by rejecting this proposal have we lost that ability? And that's a nuance there, but I I'd mean, like to know. I think there will always be a path forward if you want to go back to talk to these folks again. I mean, you could just. Because this is a services contract and not a construction contract, and the requirements are less formal, both for the solicitation and for the decision of the board, um, I mean, there's a few things you could do. You could either include them in the resolicitation and just allow them to resubmit their proposal, even though you've already <laughs> okay. rejected it. Um, or if you don't get any of the second time, you could simply ask the one firm to resubmit their proposal and consider it again in light of. Not so we have a path forward a path that's forward. not any not any worse than where we're at right now. Right. Should should we get no proposals right. on the second go around? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you want to make a proposal to reject this? A motion. A motion. <laughs> I mean. Has there been public comment? Oh, on the oh sorry. Careful. Any public comment out there? Got carried away. Uh, yes. Is this the state water board that you're dealing with on this? To the okay. That's yeah. correct. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have a question out there? Okay. Uh, Bob, did you want to say anything? Yeah, just so uh, what we're experiencing more. Um, reality we face that these kinds of systems are just no longer economically or even now engineeringly viable. Um, you know, it's too, you know, most of this work has been concentrated in fewer firms as the regulations have gotten more, more strict between installed to to go. This just points out we gotta get those our neighbors in the Bear Creek estates onto a different system as quickly as possible. And um, Darren, I, I appreciate the effort that you're putting into this to, uh, you know, to find other people. Uh, and I think the more targeted ones are, are going to be better. I, there's no big company going to uh, bid on this. It's, it, as you say, there's not enough upside. Uh, I support rejecting this. Okay. All right. Um, it's been recommended that we reject this. Yes, do we need a motion? We need a motion. I'll make a motion that we reject the proposal received from IEC and direct staff to look elsewhere. Second. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Motion passed. No, I, I felt I shouldn't stand up for second since I was the committee chair that recommended it. Did somebody second? Yeah, I lost it. I did. Oh, okay. I, I thought I was losing my hearing. 
<laughs> no, really, no. Okay. Um, so, um, the next item is the consent agenda. And uh, Director Henry, I would like to ask, uh, you were one of the board members to pull the meeting minutes from the consent agenda for discussion. Okay, I'm going to ask that we pull the minutes from the consent agenda. And uh, I would like to request a clarification on the minutes. There's um, a report out of closed session listed, um, but I don't believe that the board voted on that report. So it's not, I don't believe the board voted on your comments following the meeting. Um, and so I would like to have the minutes reflect uh, that there was no report out of closed session, but they could note that President Henry made those comments. I'm getting deleted, right? You're getting re-characterized. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and since we pulled the item from um, the consent agenda, it would be appropriate to invite public comment and uh, a motion from the board to accept the minutes. Yeah, okay. Any comment from the public on the minutes? No comment? Sorry. Lou, you want to make a motion? I will make a motion. Uh, I would like help in making a motion from the legal counsel. I recommend a motion to approve uh, the minutes from the special board meeting from May 29th um, with um, the clarification that there was um, no report out of closed session, just comments by the president. I will make that motion and ask Colin to take it from the the verbal of the, of the meeting minutes. Okay. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Uh, Director Ferris? Aye. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Okay. All righty. Um, district reports. Of the district reports in front of you from the engineering, environmental, finance, and business, legal, and operations. If you have any questions or comments, the department heads except the uh, operations who is uh, he's on vacation. He'll be here to answer any of your questions. Okay. Or try to May I make a comment about legal? Uh, sure. I don't typically, but uh, I did want to update the board that I received confirmation today that the, pro the settlement proceeds in the Holloway and Vieira matters have been dispersed to the uh, payees, and therefore the district will be filing a dismissal of its cross-complaint shortly. And everybody else will file dismissals as well. Okay. Great news. Thank you. Would you like your picture taken with Bob? <laughs> no? Okay. Bob isn't here. But, but it's name tag. Sure right. it would be oh, it's it's very funny. Yeah. Getting some souvenir leader hosen by. Oh, you finally noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been giggling about it all night. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I missed that. Uh, did, did, you, did you say it was going to be filed soon? Soon, yes. Um, likely within a few days, all the dismissals will be filed. Oh, great. Okay. That's great. A hey, big win win. I'm going to drop off now. I've got to get today's activities. Goodbye. You guys still have you guys still have a forum, so you're, you're thanks everybody. Thank you, Bob. Bye. Bye and good luck. Yeah. Okay, uh, Rick. Pardon me. Uh, I have nothing that to say. The department head like to speak to anything in their reports. Any highlights? Um. Committee reports? Um, we had an engineering committee and we had an environmental committee that both lose <laughs> committees. I, I believe I reported on the results yeah. of the engineering committee at the last board meeting. Yeah. As far as the um, 
the activity at the Environmental Committee last week, uh, there was a presentation made by Jen, thank you Jen, regarding the, the exponent report that basically covers the, the recommendations for our, our water sustainability in the valley. And of their 20 plus scenarios that they described, Jen distilled it down to three recommended uh, courses of action to be forwarded to the board. And um, I, I'm, that will be coming out as a formal report proposal, correct? Yes, but not until but, later. Yeah, but, but just to let you know what that is, um, the first one will be that we will uh, we will try to adjust the water right of the Felton uh, water uh, fall creeks basically to, to, to basically memorialize what we are already doing. And we're not sure that's going to work, but we're going to give it a try because we think that's an easy solution. Uh, the second one is that we're going to supply the south system with water from the north system. Uh, but, and, and that's probably the easiest thing to do. And that will be the CEQA. And that will be the CEQA. Required on the intertie. And then the third thing is we're going to import water from Loch Lomond to the Kirby facility to be processed there. Uh, that will not be an inexpensive fix nor a short-term fix. It's going to take money and time. Uh, but those are the three recommendations that we believe will address the, the sustainability of the valley. And more detail to follow with, with Jen's report. Is there anything you want to add, Jen? To that? Uh, the CEQA on the inner tie is probably the most short-term thing we can do, and the other ones are very long-term and possibly very expensive solutions. There, there are no cheap solutions and there are no short-term solutions. Thank you. But at least we're moving forward with the uh, sustainability plan. As far as the new business, um, we already talked at, at length about fire planning preparation and history. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time in the committee meeting discussing that as well. That's that's clearly going to rise to the top of the priority for the environmental committee, and uh, we'll we'll go into that in in much more detail. I do want to point out that there is no money currently in the budget for that, so we will probably be coming back with hat in hand later to ask for money because we believe that's an important endeavor, uh, and right now we don't have any money budgeted to do it but we need to do it. At least that's the feeling of the Environmental Committee. As far as the pg and public safety shutoffs, Rick can maybe go into more detail, but basically we put more emergency generators into the budget to, to, hold, to hold us over if there is a blackout. All right, that's what right. I proved, proved tonight. So that's four or that's eight additional generators that are in this budget that we'll be moving on. But we've just begun the discussion of this because right. there's going to be a lot more evaluation and input and decision making before we can assess what it is that PG&E can do with do what they want to with us with impunity, and we have to plan on being without power for days. Are they all portable generators, or four of them will be portable and four of them yeah. will be stationary? Um, we're still. Uh, supply and treatment are still fine tuning where exactly they want to put the, uh, the stationary and the portable. How we're going to do that. But, you know, back to what Lou said about fire safety, all departments are working on fire safety. It, it's an endeavor that we're all working on. And it's developing into our, our emergency response plan, which we have with the state. There's a lot to it. And it's top heavy on water quality as the state requires, but all departments are working on that. There's always, there'll be more to follow, that just be ongoing. Okay. And the last item was an update on environmental projects. We didn't get too far into this because it quickly became evident that we're getting into a non-agendized item, i.e. the budget, so we just deferred it to discussion tonight and carried it for the next meeting of the Environmental Committee. Okay. That's it. So, Rick, with the portable generators that you move around, do you do you locate them so they're near where they might be moved? I mean, how big of a deal is that to move them? Well, <clears throat> not to get too far into this, but it's a huge deal that just to store these generators now. We already have like four to six portables, and storing them and maintenance them and keeping them rodent-proof it's a huge undertaking. 
Okay. Rodents love generators. Uh, they, they destroy. They destroy the windings and so forth. So it's it's a constant maintenance battle. Moving them around will not be a problem, but what might be a problem in a huge power outage will be traffic. You know, our district's not that big where we can't get to. But most likely, you know, we haven't put the finishing touches on them. The portables will be kept out of the sites that we're going to um, originally need them at, and then we'll move them from there from some site to site. Staff will start leapfrogging. Um, they'll know how many hours we have to pump each individual site side to side. But generators in general, it's a huge maintenance and a huge maintenance expense. Mm -hmm. It would be permitting with the Monterey Bay Air Pollution Control Board would be additional costs. So to have a fleet of generators is quite an expense to the district and a maintenance issue. Because half of them will be LPG, will be propane, which you can have a, has a, a really great shelf life. If the larger ones are diesel, if they do not have a shelf life, then you have to treat the diesel, you have to filter the diesel every year. It, it's just a, it was a lot to a okay. mm -hmm. Thank Question. you. Rick, do you have a program for maintaining the generators in terms of uh, turning them on occasionally? Yes, most of them are on a, a one week auto exercise. I think they all are, right? I think they're all are on. They automatically come on every week and some go into a load test. And then the treatment plants we have with it, uh, a mechanic is a certified with that, like Owen or Generac, that come out every six months and we'll go through it. You know, that's the other thing. You know, so you time. simulate a power outage. Exactly. So, so the generator, test. you know, waits the load test, goes under the, load. Yeah, the few okay. seconds and then. Exactly. If you haven't seen that switch throw, yeah. you really should. Yeah. It's a fireworks display that it can is be not rivaled. Well, not as bad anymore, but um, yes, they are load tested and so forth. There's a lot of maintenance to generate. Thank you. Um, so the chair for LADIC isn't here. Did you want to say something, Dave? No, I have nothing to add to the report. You don't have anything to report? Okay. All right. We are still looking for someone to educate us and involve us. Assessment. I'm sorry. Yeah. Assessment district. So, um, I would say we're done. Does everybody agree? We're done? Can, can we get the, we make a request to get the next chair back? Get the next? The nice chairs. Oh, the nice chairs yeah. back. Yeah. You mean the chairs here? Yeah. Oh. The comfortable ones. You can ask. Well, I'm, I'm asking. Well, well, I'm not in charge of chairs. They're down, they're down the street. We, we sell them? Back. No, 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 they're down the street. Oh, oh well, when we had, uh, yeah, when you we don't fit. We have too many yeah. people. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're gonna we're going to adjourn, and we can have this discussion.